Boban or Yao? How effective can two-time player of the year Zach Eadie be in the NBA? The answer probably lies somewhere between those two extremes. He may not have superstar potential in the association, but there's a path for Edie to be a solid NBA big man who contributes as soon as next year. The first piece of the ED puzzle to understand is how a player can dominate the NCAA the way he has over the last couple years without being able to translate that to NBA stardom. Only the top 1% of college ballers will ever play professionally. So the overwhelming majority of opponents guys like ED feast on wouldn't even be able to prepare him for a career overseas, let alone in the best basketball league in the world. The NCAA has also seen a top tier talent drain over the years. First with the preps to pros era, then with the best prospects being one and done at the collegiate level, and recently with the short lived G League Ignite option. In other words, tearing up the NCAA doesn't mean what it once did. 13 of the first 19 Naismith Award winners ended up in the Basketball Hall of Fame. In the 37 years since, Tim Duncan is the only Naismith winner to end up in Springfield, though Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis will eventually join him. Of the last three Naismith winners before Edie, only one was a first round draft pick and became an NBA rotation player, with the other two fighting for their NBA lives. Of course, none of those guys were 7'4 behemoths, and sheer size will always translate in a game where the goal resides 10 feet above the ground. But Edie's college adversaries didn't possess the otherworldly athleticism, strength, and skills necessary to negate his tremendous size advantage the way NBAers will. You don't scare me. Most importantly though, the league's evolution has left bigs like Edie fighting an uphill battle. The pace and space era brought upon by the three-point and analytics revolutions doesn't leave much room or minutes for immobile bigs. With modern offenses trying to stretch opposing defenses thin and defenses needing to guard more space and more skill within that space than ever before, today's bigs need smaller skills on both ends of the court. The best can space the floor on one end, protect the rim on the other, and move their feet when switched onto perimeter players. Can Edie do even one of those things? Even protecting the rim will be a brand new ball game for Edie and the association, where the defensive three second rule means it's not as simple as merely patrolling the paint. NBA teams will test Edie's mobility and lateral quickness by spamming the pick and roll and running five out lineups against them, ultimately playing the 300 pounder off the floor. But that doesn't mean there isn't NBA value to be found in his giant frame or ways for Edie to demand that opposing teams try to match up with him. His heft and nearly 7 foot 11 wingspan will still make him a deterrent to opposing drivers in the right drop scheme, but most of the potential lies on the offensive end. Edie's offensive diet in the association won't be as post up heavy as it was at Purdue, but between his physical advantages in the post and on the offensive glass, his length as a pick and roll and lob finisher, and his surprisingly soft touch, the big man can be a legitimate problem on that end as a rookie and a potential nightmare for opposing defenses in time. His interior presence, vertical spacing, and improving court vision should create good looks for the shooters around him. A 71% free throw shooter on outrageous volume, there's reason to believe the shooting mechanics are there for Edie to expand his own range as a pro after attempting just two three-point attempts over four years as a boilermaker. He'll also have to continue working on his left hand, but his track record is one of rapid development. We're talking about a guy who had barely picked up a basketball before starting to play in grade 10. The 75th ranked center and 358th ranked recruit in his class just four years ago. You don't go from that to being one of the most dominant players in NCAA history just by being big. And make no mistake, Edie has few equals when it comes to his collegiate dominance. He's the first college player to average at least 24 points, 12 rebounds, and 2 blocks in 27 years. Add in the improved playmakers to assists per game this season, and no player in Basketball Reference's 32-year NCAA database can match his overall stat line. The only other college baller to post a 40-plus PER, as Edie did in his sophomore and junior years, was Zion Williamson. 
This is not Canada dry. This is Canada juicy. Don't love that. There's just no precedent for a player being as box score dominant as Edie was in college without turning into at least a solid NBA rotation player, if not more. In what's touted to be the weakest draft class in over a decade, how many teams can really afford to pass on Edie's floor? There are legitimate reasons to be concerned about his all-star viability in the modern NBA, but Zach Edie is going to get buckets, demand double teams, devour rebounds, and be an NBA fixture for as long as he stays healthy. With all due respect to Boban Marjanovic, who's made nearly $40 million over a nine-year career in the association, I think we can set our sights a little higher. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.